So uh, I have the uh, pleasure of uh, introducing the uh, Michael Wargo Award this year. And uh, this year, the recipient of this award is uh, Larry Taylor. Now, um, I have to tell you the news that unfortunately he's not here. He's in the hospital right now, um, suffering from exhaustion, but he's doing okay. And, and uh, Clive has actually uh, visited him recently. He says he's uh, coherent, and that's uh, perhaps an improvement. So, uh, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a first, as, as, Clive, as Clive says. We do this because we're friends with, with Larry, but, uh, but um, I know, I know we, all, we all love Larry, and, uh, and so what we're doing instead of Larry giving his talk is uh, we're doing this in two parts. Um, first of all, as Yvonne mentioned earlier, um, Adele Morissette flew all the way out here from New York to be here. Just thank you so much, Adele, for doing that. It's always wonderful to, to see you and give, share good memories about Mike. So Adele will be talking a few minutes about Mike, and then Clive is going to uh, share a few slides about uh, Larry. Um, I will remind you that uh, this uh, session is, is being recorded, and uh, so what I'd like to do what I'd like to do is um, we're going to show this. We're going to make sure that Larry sees this. And uh, I'd like to give a huge round of applause for Larry Taylor. <laughs> so Larry, when you watch this, we love you. So without further ado, Adele. Um, thank you so much, everybody. It's really, really a pleasure to be here. And I was really looking forward to meeting Larry Taylor, so I hope I get to do so um, at another date or, or virtually. Um, I'm really honored to be here today with Michael's colleagues and friends uh, to help present the fourth annual uh, Wargo Award, which, uh, as you know, uh, is presented to a scientist or engineer who has significantly contributed to the integration of both exploration and planetary science throughout their career. That's a lot of words, but you know, I think those of you who knew Michael understood that uh, one of his greatest talents was uh, bringing people from uh, disparate disciplines together and making everybody play nice in the sandbox. Um, those of you who remember Michael, he was a gifted scientist, an engineer, and a teacher and a very strong advocate for lunar exploration. Um, his encyclopedic knowledge of both science and exploration issues was legendary. Um, but many of you who, who knew Michael remember, it's, it's not just his awards and his achievements, both at MIT uh, and at NASA, but his uh, booming, sonorous voice. Uh, we would call him Radio Free Wargo. Uh, his larger-than-life physical presence and personality, his great sense of humor, and really his ability to bring people together to solve the world's problem, problems over a cold beer. So it's my great pleasure to be here today, um, and I get to turn the program over to you, Clive, um, to uh, introduce the 2017 Wargo Award. And thank you again. It's a real honor to be here. If we have the first slide, please. Ah, there we go. Um, I am not Larry Taylor, but you probably figured that one out. And as he's not here to defend himself, there will not be a roast. Well, not much of a roast anyway. But when I arrived in the United States on July the 2nd, 1986, one of the first things Larry said to me is, if ever I upset you, you must tell me. But after about six months, I couldn't take it anymore. So I went in and I told him in no uncertain terms, the next three and a half years were wonderful. He found my limit and he knew how far he could push me, which was quite a way actually. But uh, Larry Taylor being honored in this way is actually quite significant because I, I received this award two years ago 
in large part uh, due to Larry Taylor. So I feel very honored to be up here to sort of give you a, a quick summary of Larry's contribution, which is quite varied. And he just focused on things that, and continues to focus on things that he enjoyed doing. Now, life doesn't get any better than that. So you can see here the, the citation uh, for the Wargo, Award, the Wargo Award, and you can see that he's been involved since Apollo 11. So that's uh, fortunately or unfortunately a few years now. Um, but he has always been a proponent of the moon. And I think the last bullet, if you can read that, it says his zeal for a human return to the moon goes on unabated. And I spoke with him yesterday, and he was surprisingly coherent. Um, again, I said, you, you're looking remarkably well, Larry. I mean, this place is obviously uh, suiting you. So uh, it's, it's, we talked a lot about human return to the moon. How are we going to do that? So he's still, even though he's not here in body, I am sure he will be here in spirit. So what I want to do is just take a quick five minutes to sort of highlight some of the contributions to science and exploration that, uh, that my, my mentor, Larry Taylor, has, has made to our community throughout his long and uh, somewhat distinguished career. So next slide, please. So contributions, I've sort of outlined these, and um, I'm sure I've forgotten many things. But these are the contributions, and you can start to see the overlap between exploration and science. And he blurred the lines way back when, um, you know, during the 70s and early 80s, where he started to use his scientific knowledge to actually explore the exploration and engineering aspects, especially with uh, in situ resource utilization. So there's a, there's a long list here, and, and he's also influenced a, a large number of people. And if you go to his website, it sort of calls out those, uh, all his postdocs. And it's a, it's a long list, that's for sure. So if we could go to the next slide. So I start off with, with microwave technology and his, his uh, influence in understanding that microwaves actually couple very well with lunar regolith. It's a way to mitigate the dust, um, the, the dust issue by just having this, this uh, microwave rover that would go over and actually sinter the, uh, the regolith uh, to actually fix it so it, was, it wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't be getting everywhere. And, and this paper came out in the Journal of Aerospace Engineering. So again, this is not, not a journal I normally look at, um, I have to admit, but uh, this is something that his crossover uh, techniques that he would uh, get involved with. We go to the next slide, please. So ISRU and oxygen and water production from the lunar regolith. Again, th this, this paper, I think, is from uh, 19, where is it, 1988? No, 92. 1992. So, I mean, he was thinking about this, uh, oh boy, how, how long ago is that now? So uh, a, a long time ago for this, 25 years ago, um, again, following on from the lunar bases and space activities of the 21st century uh, in, back in the late 80s. But this was, again, something that he was uh, you know, quite, uh, quite passionate about. Next slide, please. Space weathering and, and his work with, uh, with Carly Peters on this issue has certainly advanced our science and understanding of how regolith matures and this is also part and parcel of the fact of why it couples well with microwaves, having the formation of the nanophase iron uh, within, the, uh, uh, within the regolith due to its exposure to space weathering. And uh, he's, he's published a lot of papers on this, and uh, these are just, just some of them that I pulled out uh, from his, uh, he's, he's got a lot of papers. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. The, the regolith origin and evolution, obviously a, a follow-on from his work on space weathering is, well, how do we actually get regolith and how does it evolve over time? It's sort of related to it, but there are many other things uh, that are involved in this, this lunar soil cycle, as he's called it. And again, he's, uh, he's published on this as well. And again, a lot of work with, uh, with the late Dave McKay, who was also instrumental in this, uh, in this regolith development and understanding of the, uh, of the potential 
of the lunar regolith. Next slide. And then lunar simulants. If you've been at league meetings, Larry gets very passionate about simulants uh, because you have to use the right one for the, for the actual process you're trying to investigate. Um, he led the League 2011 Simulant SAT, Specific Action Team. Uh, the, uh, the report is on the League website. And an offshoot of that is that he, he published in 2016 in Planetary and Space Science uh, an actual uh, summary of that SimSat report, um, that, uh, that team that he led to look into lunar simulants. And this is, this is one of the unresolved issues in terms of oversight um, and is there going to be a, uh, an actual um, body of people that would look, uh, oversee this type of uh, simulant formulation? What are the needs of the simulant community? Um, that sort of thing. Um, and hopefully that is starting to be put together through Johnson Space Center. Uh, next slide. And then Mari Basalt Petrogenesis. And, and develop, in developing my career, uh, Larry focused me on looking at, uh, at Mari Basalts. And uh, we produced a, a review paper in 1992. And I have to admit, this is, this is due to Larry kicking me up the backside to get me moving along with this, because I was dragging my feet um, because I had since left uh, uh, Tennessee and gone to the University of Notre Dame. But this is, uh, uh, I think, once the paper was done, um, he was he very pleased with it. Um, he put a lot of effort into it, and maybe he should have been first author on this one. But, um, oh crap, this is recorded as well, isn't it? Uh, uh, <laughs> next slide, please. <laughs> uh, then origin and evolution of, of the lunar highlands, not only the Maori basalts, but he's interested in the lunar highlands. And he's worked with Greg Snyder, there's a blast from the past, um, really started to uncover the diversity of the lunar crust from the Apollo samples that came back. Next slide, please. And then, of course, Lunar Magma Ocean. Um, the Snyder et al. Uh, 92, where we, we got the band back together again for this. But Larry, again, we were, it's just before I left um, Tennessee, Greg and I overlapped and we're sitting down with Larry. And Larry says, you know, we really need to look at the evolution of the magma ocean. And I think you should be doing this, looking at fractional crystallization and equilibrium crystallization, and you really need to pull this apart. And here's the outline of an idea, go have fun. So we, Greg went and had fun, and I helped out a little bit, and then I left, and then uh, Larry and he iterated quite a bit, and I got this manuscript on my desk to look at. And this is, uh, this is something that is one of the most cited papers that uh, that I've seen in a, in a long while. Um, again, in large part due to Larry's influence in directing his research group. Next slide. And then lunar meteorites. Let's not forget about those. He's a great, uh, great lover of lunar meteorites and new samples that came back. And he's always interested in getting his hands on, on new samples so that he can uh, explore new areas of the moon starting back in the 80s. Uh, or is that 91? Can't remember now. 91, um, uh, when we uh, worked on the McAlpine Hills meteorites all the way through this century. Um, again, his team putting this together, again, in large part due to Larry's leadership. Next slide. And then he went to the, uh, the other M planet, uh, went to Mars and looked at Martian meteorites. Uh, again, his interest you know, spans the solar system, but he wants samples to look at.